bring out the humor in persuasion, indicating clearly Jane Austen's use of irony in it. Or Jane Austen's irony is based on a comic view of life, and her irony raises a smile. How far is this true of persuasion? Marks 12. Answer. For all its gravity and tenderness, persuasion works within the convention of high comedy, like pride and prejudice. There is an interpretation of the various tones, severe satire, good-humored comedy and irony in persuasion. Comic irony is one of the principal sources of humor. Jane Austen's irony is all-pervasive, yet it never obtrudes itself. There are several characters in Persuasion which are depicted ironically, Sir Walter, Elizabeth, Mary, Mrs. Mosgrove and others. The portrayal of Sir Walter as the combination of handsome appearance as well as the blessing of baronetcy is obviously ironical and a source of amusement in the novel. He thinks more of his handsome looks than a woman and claims that he has not remarried for the sake of his dear daughters. While the fact is that his efforts at gaining a second match met with a failure. He thinks of his eldest daughter Elizabeth as being youthful, while all others in the family and of his acquaintance seem to have grown old. There is irony in the reluctance exhibited by Sir Walter to let out his mansion when he has already decided to rent it to a tenant. His reservations in not allowing the tenant to use the park, the pleasure grounds, and the flower garden are indeed ironical. The snobbery in the character of Sir Walter is noteworthy. When the term gentleman is brought up before him, he associates it with a man of property. The man who disapproved of the match between an Elliot and Wentworth because the latter was a nobody with highly any connections to speak of approves of the match at the end because Captain Wentworth now has £25,000 and is well placed. Sir Walter appears ridiculous and is exposed through ironical statements throughout the novel. Elizabeth is introduced to us as a lady approaching the years of danger and looking for a match with someone of her rank or a title. Her father's favorite book, The Baronetage, appears to her as an evil as against her birth date no marriage date appears in the book. Her proposals for economy, when the family is having financial constraints, are ironically described. She is unwilling to give up any of the comforts she is accustomed to, although she suggests cutting of some unnecessary charities and to refrain from refurnishing the drawing room. When and goes to Bath, both Elizabeth and Sir Walter are glad to see her for the sake of showing her the house and furniture. The portrayal of Mary is also humorous with a touch of irony. She embodies pride to a great extent and believes in social ranks and status. She seems generally dissatisfied with life and constantly complains of her ailments in an exaggerated manner which is very comical. She feels neglected and hurt if her husband is away from her for more than a few hours. She is critical of her mother-in-law's indulgence of her children and blames her for giving them to many sweets which are sure to make them sick. When Louisa meets with an accident, her desire to nurse her is far less than her desire to be with her husband. Mary always complains of being left out when anything of interest takes place. She is the most comic character in Persuasion who deplores the fact that her sore throat is always worse than that of others. The accident at Lyme is primarily a sense of shock and anxiety but Jane Austen introduces the elements of comedy very effectively. Mary is hysterical, Henrietta faints, Charles hangs over Louisa with sobs of grief and the news brings together women and boatmen to enjoy the sight of a dead young lady, nay, two dead young ladies for it proved twice as fine as the first report. Follies and nonsense, whims and inconsistencies amuse Jane Austen. She treats life as comedy, and sees the incongruity between a person's pretensions and his abilities, between his words and his actions and this is what makes her a comic writer primarily. Marvin Mudrick believes that though there are comic scenes and comic characters in Persuasion, 
its inner orbit and final effect are not comic. It is here that persuasion divulges from other comedies, for it is concerned with the emotional resistance that man puts up against the perpetual encroachment of the social world. D. W. Harding states that Jane Austen had no didactic intentions attributed to the satirist. She was no missionary, yet she was sensitive to the crudeness and complacencies of the people around her and knew that her real existence depended on resisting the values they implied. She found unobstructive means for survival without an open conflict with the friendly people around her. Caricature has served Jane Austen's purpose perfectly. There is a general tendency to think that irony and humor must coexist. Saintsbury, for example, remarks that an ironist without humor is almost inconceivable. But Meredith points out that the humorous perception is one of incongruity in man, between what he is and what thinks he is, between expectation and fulfillment, between pretense and reality. The ironic perception on the contrary is one of contradictions in human experience. Thus, we come to Jane Austen's ultimate ironic vision, life itself is ironic. Expectation of a certain result bends all our efforts towards it, but we find that the reverse of what we expected has come to pass. This view of life affects her novels, very often the plot itself turns ironically back on itself. The technique of ironic statement frees Jane Austen from the necessity of making commentaries involved on her characters. It is left to the reader to understand the full force of the irony, and to make the criticism himself. Finished. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe, like, and comment.